Let's move to the, the third speaker. The third speaker is uh, Professor Zhang, Zhang Fu Wu. Dr. Wu obtained his doctor degree from the Department of Environmental Health of the University of Washington in 2002. He is a certified industrial hygienist by the American Board of Industrial Hygiene. Currently, Dr. Wu is a professor of the Department of Public Health of the National Taiwan University. So let's welcome the Professor Wu. Uh, thank you. Uh, it's my honor to be here uh, to give the talk and I, I'll keep my talk uh, as concise as possible. So um, I, uh, I believe that uh, everyone in this room uh, agree that uh, air pollution is bad for your health, right? So what we should do next? Uh, for people in the uh, field of public health, uh, we want to prevent disease. And in order to prevent disease, we need to reduce exposures. And how do we reduce exposures? Uh, based on the concept of source receptor models, uh, there are several approaches. Uh, we can have uh, emission-based uh, emission uh, reduction approach, so we can use engineer control to control the sources. Uh, alternatively, we can have the non-emission uh, reduction approach. Uh, we can ask the subject to uh, change their behaviors, uh, for example, uh, wearing masks. Uh, so uh, for emission reduction approach, uh, the research question is uh, how to identify sources and estimate their contribution uh, to the exposures. And as for the non-emission reduction approach, uh, we also need, uh, need to evaluate uh, its uh, effectiveness. So uh, in, this, uh, in this talk, uh, I'm going to share our past uh, research experience uh, on these issues. Uh, first, uh, for the emission reduction approach, uh, there are many sources, uh, for example, for PN2.5, from the traffic, from industries, from the transboundary uh, transportation. Uh, so usually uh, we measure like uh, PN2.5 concentration levels at the receptor site, uh, receptor site. So in this example, we have 10 samples and we can measure the PN2.5 mass concentrations. Uh, if we measure the chemical species further, then we can apply the receptor models uh, to decompose the chemical concentration data into two metrics. One is the profile, that's the fingerprint. So here are three examples uh, of the profile for soil, for traffic, and for industries. So based on this profile, we can identify the sources. Then mathematically, we can further calculate the G matrix, that's the contribution. Then we can estimate the source contributions. So that's the ideas of the source apportionment or the receptor models. Uh, there are uh, different types of receptor models. Uh, for CMB models, we provide the source profiles, then estimate the contributions. Uh, for other models, uh, we can ask the model to uh, retrieve the profiles and contributions uh, simultaneously. Uh, so in the following slides, uh, I'm going to share some examples of uh, what information we can obtain from the receptor models. Uh, the first example uh, is, uh, is about the sources for uh, PCDDF or the dioxins. Uh, in Taipei. Uh, here's a map of the Taipei. Uh, so we have uh, compiled a database for PCDDF uh, concentration uh, collected at uh, 67 sampling sites uh, between year 2003 and 2009. And the total sample size is uh, about 300. So on the map, uh, each uh, circle dot represents the sampling locations. And you may notice there are three triangle, red triangles that represent the locations of the incinerators. And we have several source profiles. Um, we have profile for uh, just incense burning, for just paper burnings. These are two uh, sources related to uh, religious uh, activities. We also have profile for uh, restaurant burning, traffic emissions, crematories, uh, incinerators, and also oil, uh, oil fire, fire boilers. And most of the time, people will point their finger to uh, incinerators. So we use the model to demonstrate uh, what are the major sources of dioxins in Taipei. Uh, these are profiles for the different uh, sources. Uh, the bottom three, uh, they are profiles for the uh, incinerators. 
and we also have the uh, profile for traffic, et cetera. So they look, look different to each other. Uh, based on the measurements, uh, the, the, the blue dot uh, represent the uh, dioxin concentrations. So uh, over years, it decreased gradually. Uh, the green dot uh, represent the uh, toxic equivalencies, um, uh, consider the toxicity uh, issues. So it also decreased over the years. So these are the monitoring results. Uh, after applying the receptor models, we can identify that the traffic, actually traffic uh, is the major source in Taipei for dioxin. It accounts for around 56% uh, 56 uh, the incinerator uh, accounts for another 13-20%. Uh, so traffic is the major source. And also the, over the years, the uh, dioxin from incinerators, based on the modern result, it decreased uh, 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 again. So uh, the implication is that uh, if we want to uh, decrease the dioxin concentration in Taipei, we should focus more on the traffic emission. That's the first example. Uh, the second example is uh, related to the sources of particles and the VOCs. Uh, so in this study, uh, we have hourly VOC measurements collected from the uh, photo chemical assessment monitoring stations, the PEM site. Uh, we also collected 12-hour PN 2.5 samples for three weeks and analyzed their chemical uh, components with the EDXRF and also the IC. Uh, this is just a quick overview of the summary statistics uh, on your left side, so you can see there are many different types of VOCs monitored. And on your right-hand side uh, are the chemical composition for PN 2.5. So these are uh, uh, measurement results. Uh, by applying the receptor model, we identify five factors. The first two uh, are related to uh, traffic. Uh, we also have the profile, uh, we also identify the sources related to industries, uh, transported uh, particles, and the secondary uh, aerosols. Uh, so this is the uh, pie chart for the contribution from different sources for VOCs. So the vehicles together account for uh, more than 50%. Uh, we also have some contribution from industries. And the picture is a little bit different for PN 2.5. Uh, the traffic together account for 35%, but we have around 30% uh, of the particle are from the transported sources. And we also have the secondary aerosol uh, uh, account for another 25%. So the implication here is that, um, uh, at least in Taipei, if you want to control the uh, uh, we need different control policies uh, for VOC and for uh, PN 2.5 because they, uh, the, the source contribution are different uh, between these two types of uh, pollutants. And the third example is about the particle number concentration versus the health effects. Uh, a, a little bit background. Uh, there are some uh, previous studies uh, focusing on the size segregated, size segregated particle number concentration data versus the health effects, but the conclusion is not uh, uh, conclusive. Uh, so we hypothesize that it's because the previous study didn't, uh, uh, didn't take the, uh, the source uh, difference into considerations. So in one of the studies, uh, so in one study, uh, we get the PN number concentration and site distributed, site distributed data from the PN super site uh, that uh, collected uh, in the first six months in year 2008. And the health data, uh, the subjects are the students at five schools, and uh, they have asthma and or allergic rhinitis. And they have repeated uh, FVC, uh, FVC measurements over the study periods. So this is an example of uh, collaboration between exposure scientists, that's me, and uh, the environmental epidemiologist, that's uh, Professor Leon Guo. Uh, the marketing results on your left hand side, uh, the x axis is the site distribution, and the y axis is the uh, number concentration. Uh, so on average, the total particle number concentration is about 12,000 particles per cubic centimeters. And the PN 2.5 level is around 31 microgram per cubic meter during the study period. Uh, by applying the receptor model, we decompose the uh, particle number concentration into three factors. 
Uh, the first one is related to diesel emissions, uh, small particles. Uh, the second one uh, is related to age uh, emission from vehicle. And the third one is related to transported or secondary aerosols. That's based on the modeling results. Uh, in terms of the health effect on the uh, FVC, uh, we have different exposure metrics. Uh, by size, we can calculate the uh, particle number concentration for ultron fine particles, particles more than 0.1 micrometers, or accumulation mode part particles, AP, uh, particles larger than 0.1 micrometers. Or we can have the uh, exposure matrix by uh, the source, uh, diesel emission, H vehicle emission, transported and secondary emission uh, particles. And only one of the exposure matrix uh, have a significant association with the uh, FVC. Any guess? One of them. Transported and secondary aerosols. And there's some reason behind it, but uh, I'll skip that part. Um, and we'll move into the non-emission reduction approach. Uh, I use the cyclist as, uh, uh, as an example. Uh, in urban areas, uh, there is a great effort on, on promotion of biking. Uh, an indirect effect, uh, in, an indirect benefit is the reduction of pollution from mo uh, motor vehicles. Uh, here are some photos of the shared biking system uh, in Taipei, in Japan, in Seoul, and also there are some news articles about uh, uh, the popularity of a shared biking system in uh, Asian countries. But we also know that uh, uh, people, when people ride bicycles, uh, we may uh, get a very health effect uh, because we are close to the vehicle exhaust, we get high exposures, and during the exercise, uh, we also have a higher ventilation rate. So what are the pot potential solutions? Of course, we can use engineer controls, control the traffic emission, uh, change to uh, electric, electric vehicles, but uh, we also can uh, ask people to uh, wear masks or change their behaviors, uh, uh, ride bicycles on different routes. Uh, so uh, to test uh, the last uh, uh, idea, we conduct a pilot studies. So we choose uh, to monitor uh, the PN2.5 exposures uh, at two different routes. Um, the red uh, line represents the bike lane along a major road and the blue line represents a small alley. Uh, here, are the two, uh, here are two photos. On your left hand side are the photos for the small alley, almost no uh, motorcycles or cars. On your right hand side uh, is the bike lanes along a major road. So you can see some uh, mot uh, uh, motorcycles and also cars on, on the left hand side of the photo. Uh, the preliminary results. Uh, so the median values when riding bikes, uh, riding bikes uh, along the major roads, the median values is about 21 microgram per cubic meters. And when you ride the bicycles in a small alley, the median values is about 16. 21 versus 16. The difference is about five microgram per cubic meters is almost 24% of reduction of the PN 2.5 exposures. No mass is required. No engineering control is required. You can reduce your PN 2.5 uh, exposure by 24%. Uh, of course, uh, there are some limitations of this kind of data. Uh, we only repeat it for five times uh, it's, uh, during certain seasons, but I just want to use this example uh, to share some uh, thoughts about how to reduce the exposures. Okay, so uh, the final message is that uh, while we do great research, uh, we should also think about how to reduce uh, uh, exposures. Uh, the funding sources uh, for this study are from the uh, Ministry of Science and Technology, the Taiwan EPA, and the Department of Environmental Protection of the Taipei City Government. And I think uh, you are happy to see this one. It's time for the lunch. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much, Professor Wu. We can close the section on time. <laughs>